Hello Interwebs and welcome back to Let's Play Scratches Director's Cut. Uh, when we left off we missed an electrician <laughs> who didn't have the patience to wait a few more minutes so we would have actually made it to the uh, front gate to meet him. Then we called Jerry and um, well, both him and the electrician should be arriving tomorrow. Now we'll have to um, find a way to pass the time, I guess, until we can go sleep. As uh, our art hater forgot the lights on on his car, we weren't able to go to the town to buy even food, let alone candles for the night. We did find an oil lamp or some lantern. Old fashioned lamp. Yep, we have that. But I guess we will go <coughs> upstairs to see if Michael wants to write something perhaps. Hmm. Let's see. Typewriter. <laughs> Let's see. I knew I had to work on my book, but I decided that looking around a bit more wouldn't hurt. Okay. Question is, what should we then look around? Should we go back to the basement? <laughs> or what? I don't think we have anything that could now help us get the key for the door in the attic. Although, mm, what could there be something else? Um, hmm. What was this paper? I forgot. Let's see, with some strange markings, and I'm sh I was sure there was much more to it than at first seemed clear. Could we try to do a pencil rubbing thing? I managed to reveal what appeared to be a letter in Italian. Wow. Let's check it out then. It was the letter in Italian. I had to do something about it. What, mail it? <laughs> I certainly needed some help with the letter, but who should I have mailed it to? Um, aren't you the one who's supposed to know that, Michael? Well, I guess we'll call Barbara. Maybe she knows. <laughs> or Jerry. Hello? Hey, it's me, Bobby dear. I need to ask you a favor. I found a letter here, and I'm curious about it. It's in Italian. Do you think you could translate it for me? My, Mr. Athwaite, are we being naughty? Mrs. Styles. Yes, yes, of course I can. Just send me the letter and I'll put hands to work as soon as I have it here. Excellent. Hmm, I wonder if the postman will come by. I feel like I'm the last person alive on the whole planet here. But have you told the post office in Roxbury that you're moving to Blackwood Manor? Yes, Jerry did. I just hope they don't forget about me, that's all. In any case, thank you. You're such a dear. That's what I'm here for. Actually, that's what I'm paying you for. Anyway, I'll go and try mailing that letter. I'll be standing by for action. Thanks. Goodbye. Good luck. Barbara is Michael's dear. I guess maybe Cherry is his moose then. Maybe a Canadian moose. Who knows? Okay, let's see. Do we just put it in the envelope? Yeah. Do we need to... The envelope had the Italian letter in it. Do we need to put the address there? I guess... We did. And was properly addressed. Okay. I think we'll go take it to our mailbox. Though it doesn't have a stamp. So I wonder if the... 
postman will accept it. But I guess we will find out. <laughs> Let's put it in all the way down. There we go. It is in. What should we do then? Hmm? I don't think we can get into the garage still. We don't have anything to break the chain with, or the I think it had a padlock. I think we'll just return inside <laughs> to the comfy bosom of our new home. And what's the time now? 6 p.m. Mm, okay. Is that it now? Can we now go write something? Or will Michael still want to do something else? I knew I had to work on my book. Blah 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 blah. What do you want from me, Michael? Damn you! we do then? Yeah, yeah, oh great master. Let's check the journal. Mm, where were we? Can't find any candles. There goes the crowning glory of my troubled first day. The car won't start. That cursed fog is the culprit. Yeah, I'm not your bad memory or anything. <laughs> it's the fog. I forgot and left the lights on, and of course I have been too busy to bother with the car. We actually weren't, Michael. You are just blind. Even blinder than me. And that says a lot. I should ask Cherry to come for me. Cherry won't be able to drive today. I'm on my own, alone, no lights, and I don't even know the house yet. I did know what I was getting into by coming here, but this isn't... Eh, wrong location. <laughs> what I was ex expecting. Yeah, this isn't the wrong location. <laughs> I managed to reveal a letter that seems to be in Italian. I'm curious about it, so I should try to find a way to translate it. Barbara has kindly agreed to translate the letter for me. She's such a dear and smart. If only she were prettier. God, Michael, you can't be so shallow. I'd better go and mail her that letter. We, ha we have done that, Michael. And yeah, it seems... For some reason the Steam in-game overlay is on, though I thought I'd turned it off. But I guess I was like Michael, I blame the fog. The fog was the cause of that too like everything. So we shall save here and I shall deal with it. I don't want any extra distractions <laughs> to freak me out all of a sudden jumping on the screen. So we shall continue momentarily. Alrighty, let's continue. Downstairs again. I don't know, should we go check? Okay, that was weird. Should we go check the places outside again then? Or should we light the fire? Let's try. Oh, I guess he complains that there's no gasoline to light the fire with. Let's see, would this paper be... I didn't need to do that. So I'm guessing we won't light a fire. The idea was nice, but it wasn't that cold really, and I preferred to save the few matches I had left. Okay, be boring then, Michael. I did not mean to look at that painting. <laughs> hmm. We don't really have anything that I could imagine would help us with those locked doors and gates and whatnot in the uh, outside buildings. And like Michael wrote in the journal, we have checked the whole manor place now. 
course, I don't know if... Well, that probably doesn't count the outside. Let's make a quick call again to Jerry. Please tell us what to do. Hello? Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? Do you know anything about the previous inhabitants of this house? Not much. Just there were some strange individuals. There's also the murder. You're kidding me. A murder? An old-fashioned murder. You'd probably love the details, but sadly I don't know very much. It's old history, really. Although it caused quite a stir there in Rothbury. It seems the owner, James Blackwood, I think, went mad and killed his wife. I do remember the date, though. May 1963. James. James Blackwood, according to the stuff I've been reading. Ah, so you're already turning the place upside down. I should have thought so. There's enough material for a whole series of stories here, you know. After you finish your book, my friend. Yeah, yeah. But it can never hurt poking around a little. Would you just get back to work? Call me if you need anything. All right. Goodbye. Yeah, let's call him if we need anything like we do, so he can tell us he can come here or help us in any way Ugh. okay so all we would have had to do after mating the letter was to call to Jerry again so we kind of ran around for nothing but now we have a date and year of a murder happening here so I guess it's time to head to the attic to check the newspaper piles again Let's see if we'll find something there about it. Up here. Mm -hmm. Wait, didn't the door open or from the... <laughs> Someone mirrored the video or something clearly for the opening door because it opens on the hinge side in the video. <coughs> Continuity, people. <laughs> okay, let's check. I looked for the date that Jerry told me and found an interesting article. Terrible news shocks the community of Rothbury. Mr. James Blackwood, distinguished resident of this town and a widely acknowledged construction engineer, was accused of murder yesterday by Miss Eva Mariani, maid of the Blackwood family. While the nature of this situation is of the most unusual, given that Mr. Blackwood is a highly respected gentleman, Miss Mariani, an Italian immigrant and aspiring photographer, affirms to having a photograph that supports this accusation. So that was the maid's room where we found the uh, photographs and equipment and stuff. I knew no one would ever believe me, so I took a picture of him, she says. I was supposed to be in town during the afternoon, but I didn't have the need to. I mean, I didn't have any errands to do, so I was in my room and saw this shadow out in the garden. When I glanced through the window, I just couldn't believe my eyes. The lady. Oh god, the sole thought of it sent shivers down my spine. The photograph in question is in possession of the authorities and it has been revealed that it clearly shows Mr. Blackwood burying a shape in his garden. We can almost confirm that the shape is a body, says police chief William Bailey, but even if the image is not clear, this alone with Miss Mariani's statement is enough to open a serious case against Mr. Blackwood. Police officers are already heading to the Blackwood Manor as we speak. Up until this accusation, it was believed that Mrs. Catherine Blackwood was on a trip. <coughs> According to the information we received from the school where she teaches, the police chief continues, a notice was sent to the teacher's department which stated that Mrs. Blackwood had to leave on a sudden trip and that she would make use of her license to do so. Miss Mariani's accusation puts Mr. Blackwood in a very compromising situation. Even if we can't find anything in the garden, he has a lot of explaining to do. The efforts of Dr. Christopher Milton, one of Rothbury's most respected doctors and longtime friend of the Blackwood family, to minimize the facts have been unsuccessful and the news is the subject of discussion throughout the whole town. 
Hundreds of rumors are crossing the land. Theories range from plausible and well-conceived to wild and crackpot ideas. But the question that keeps lingering in everybody's mind for which the answer has yet to be found is why would a wealthy and educated man cold-heartedly murder his wife after 30 years of marriage? Hmm. Some people just snap. It's as simple as that. And it rhymes too. Okay, I guess this is all that uh, we can find from these piles at the moment. Okay. I guess it's time to go downstairs and call Cherry again. <laughs> call Mr. Cheriatric. Okay, now it's eerily silent here. I don't like this. Ea, Ea, protect me, master, oh lord. <laughs> ah, now I feel much safer. <laughs> It was getting late. Perhaps it was now a good time to go to sleep. Oh, now you wanna go to sleep? Nah, -uh. no way, Michael. We are not going to sleep now. You didn't wanna sleep earlier. You are not going to sleep now either. And it's fucking 7 p.m. It's getting late. I should go sleep. Children's program has just ended. Bedtime for me. Mm. <laughs> Let's call geriatric. Busy. A busy boy. Mm. Okay, I guess we will go sleep then. Kinda early in my opinion. I was getting very tired. Michael Artwine. Who the hell would want to sleep in this room seriously without at least removing several pictures? Preferably through the window. <laughs> Write something, Michael. I knew I had to work on my book, but I decided that looking around a bit more wouldn't hurt. Well, let's go look around then, as you apparently don't want to sleep anymore. <laughs> Mister, I can't decide. I lay down on the bed. This is creepy. Why is the camera zooming slowly, constantly? Or is Michael moving? No, I think the camera is zooming in. Why does it sound like it's constantly coming from the right? Nice echo here. <laughs> Shivers. Why is the lamp there? We can't even go there. We can't go anywhere but towards the door. I'm not liking this anymore. <laughs> Where the heck is that coming from? Well, we can only go to one direction, so... The souvenir gallery... <laughs> the display cabinet <laughs> and why is there a door there's a hammer the fuck <laughs> I was awakened from my strange dream by some odd noises reverberating around the room
Even if I wanted to do some work, it was too dark at this time. You have a lamp. Use it. I think this calls for a save. If I in panic unplug things or something. <laughs> okay, that has yet to happen with any game ever, so... I doubt it would happen with this. But you never know. Suddenly the noises seem to grow louder. Do we hear them through the fireplace? The stone in the fireplace was called to the touch. Remnants of a previous fire. Could we use stethoscope here? I listened carefully as I moved the stethoscope around the fireplace. Yes, the noises were coming from there, but I still couldn't determine their source. I hate that painting there. Big nosed woman. Go burn in a fire and die somewhere painting. <laughs> okay, should we go back to the gallery then? Should we go check other fireplaces with a stethoscope? Maybe we could track track it a bit. It's midnight. <laughs> How unsurprising! <laughs> okay, let's see stethoscope. Noises were definitely spreading through the fireplaces, probably via some conduit. I concluded they had to be coming from below. No, 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 nope, nope, I'm not going there, no, I do not want to, nope, not gonna happen, nope, nope, Michael, we'll go, check, go out, you will step in your car and you will drive away. Or you would if you had not left your car battery to die. You stupid asshole. Oddly enough, I couldn't hear anything in that fireplace. Good day. I know you're here, even though I can't see you. I know the couple is here. Yep. I'm not crazy, people. I know it. Oh my god, we have to do it, don't we? We really have to go down to the basement. Oh, crap. Shivers. La 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 la. I hate this place. And damn, that sound really hurts my ears. I thought about investigating, but then I realized the basement would be pitch black at this time. I couldn't go down there without some light. Wow, Michael shows signs of intelligence. And yeah, we still don't have oil for the lamp, so... Garage would probably have oil, at least some sort of oil, maybe, but 